program comes from executive producer Lillian Garcia. Every athlete is on this quest. Every performer dives in head first, battling real life challenges and overcoming obstacles in an effort to make their dreams reality. reality. Singer, speaker, and 15 year WWE host Lillian Garcia was the first woman to ever announce WrestleMania and is now the PFL MMA cage announcer. Oh, yeah. And now she's giving you an all access pass to the human interest stories of elite athletes, extraordinary entertainers, and wellness experts. Now let's embark on another fascinating journey of chasing glory with your host, Lillian Garcia. The 39-year-old former WWE wrestler had been swimming with his 10-year-old son Sunday afternoon when the two got caught in the waves. When lifeguards swam out to help, Gaspard reportedly told them to focus on the boy. One of the many amazing things about Shad was that Shad found joy in bringing joy to everyone around him. When I think of Shad, I see that huge smile of his and the way that he would make you feel so special. He was definitely one of a kind. When I first met Shad, without me asking him, he did some pretty cool things for me. Shad was a great young man with a great attitude, and he strived to get better every time he got in the ring. I always said Shad was a walking superhero, and now the world sees it. He was such a great guy. They, you know, Shad was one of those guys that everybody loved so nice, and, and finding success in all these other things he was doing in Hollywood and, and everything else. Shad went after everything that he was passionate about in his life. If there's anything uh, that I can share with you about the loss of Shad Gaspard, is that dude was a dream chaser. You should be inspired by his journey and inspired by his, his final sacrifice. Shad, thank you for always being there for me. You were more than my tag team partner more than a friend. You were the big brother I always wanted. I miss you. Now, some of y'all can relate to me. Some of y'all want and deserve proper respect. Stand up, break out, and take what you deserve. And don't let people stand in your way. Hi guys, welcome to Chasing Glory. This week is gonna be a little different than the usual. And to be honest with you guys, this episode almost didn't happen. I was thinking of going dark for this week. And then I had a voice telling me, you better not. All right, so last week, our world was rocked. And we lost someone very, very dear and special to us. I got the call on Monday morning that Shad Gaspard had been missing. He had been swimming with his son. And as soon as we got the call, Candace Michelle and I live close by and we immediately headed to the beach. And as the day progressed, more and more WWE superstars went there uh, hearing the news. And I think even on Sunday when the news just had broken out to the family, um, we had some that were there trying to find him. And unfortunately, three days later is when his body appeared on Venice Beach. And we had to say goodbye to Shad last week. It was extremely difficult because this was a very, very special human being. And as you saw, a lot of the superstars came out and talked about what an incredible man, what an incredible hero, and then the world was even resonating with it because of the act of kindness, the act of heroism that he did, putting his son first. And then you heard from so many that have been in touch with Shad and how he had affected their lives and just the smile and the attitude and just leaving this presence that you were better for being in his presence. And that's what I remember about Shad, just a very, very special human being. But through the week, getting to know the family, I feel 
very close to them. I feel very close to Siliana. She and I, um, we've already said we're going to start a friendship. And I'm very much looking forward to that and also seeing the work that Shad is now going to be doing from the afterlife. He's already affecting a lot of people's lives. And I think that's the best thing that all of us can do is to take what has happened and turn it into something positive and beautiful and go out and live the kind of life he was living and that was going after your dreams and impacting people when they come in touch with you in your presence, make them feel good about who they are. So I was though planning on not having an episode because I was so distraught. And my whole team was thinking, yeah, let's just not have an episode and then we'll resume the week after. But Shad, I could hear him in my ear going, don't you dare. You better get out there. You better do an episode. This show is all about bringing inspiration to people and I would love to see that continue. And so that's what we're doing. So thinking about who to do the episode with, there was only one person that immediately came to mind. I mean, he's got a lot of friends, but JTG was his tag team partner for many, many, many years. And I just feel he is the one to speak about Chad. He is the one to be here. And I also wanted to get his Chasing Glory story. So guys, without further ado, it is now time to hear JTG's journey of Chasing Glory. Dude, welcome. Thanks for having me, Lillian. I'm sorry that it has to be under these circumstances. It's all right. It's all right. It's, uh, it has been a horrible week and a tumultuous week and a ups mm -hmm. and the downs and then seeing the silver linings and, mm -hmm. and all of this. How have you been able to process everything that's been going on? Because you were there on Sunday, right? Yeah, right um, when it happened? Yeah, Lillian, um, Siliana called me uh, Sunday night. I was getting ready to go to bed. And she called me from Shad's phone. You know, when Shad called me, I pick up on the first, second ring. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Um, we, we speak to each other every day. We text and we spoke to each other every day. Um, that, but he called me uh, that, that, um, that evening, and it was his wife. And his wife um, told me that Shad was missing. And um, I'm like, what are you... At first, the first thing I thought it was a prank, because we, we right. always pranked each other. That's, that's Shad and I's relationship. We roasted each other. We pulled pranks on each other. And that's the first thing that came to mind. But for some reason, the tone of her voice, I'm like, is either this is real or she's a good, good actress. Um, but I said, I'm going to go along with it. You know, I jumped mm -hmm. in the shower, brushed my teeth, and I, um, I rushed over there. And then um, we were on the beach with, beach with flashlights <sighs> looking for Shad. <clears throat> so we were we was there for a few. I was there till a little past midnight. And, um, you know, I think that day I think I accepted it you know mm -hmm. I had I had to accept it yeah I didn't you know I was waiting for you know a big bear hug from behind like ah I got you you know but I'm, so a part of me is still waiting <laughs> for that big bear hug from I behind know. I know <sighs> it's so hard to accept I mean I got there uh Monday morning mm -hmm. and Candace and I but then you know when I saw Siliana's face and Araya, oh my gosh, both of them. I mean, you could just see how distraught. Yeah. And <clears throat> knowing, you know, they just showed up at the beach to have a fun day. Mm -hmm. And then something like that happens. And it wasn't like Shad didn't know how to swim. Yeah, Some people he, are like... He knew how to swim and he went right? to the beach religiously. He was He's a, from Curacao. Like yeah. he grew up on the beach. Yeah. Just on Saturday, we, me and him were supposed to go to the beach. Um, he had texted uh, Chris Masters and I, because Chris Masters just moved back to California. Yeah. Um, to LA, and he was like, "Hey guys, let's all go to the beach on um, oh, was it Saturday?" And then um, Chris Masters had plans, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm down," you know. And then um, I didn't hear from him that Saturday, and he went Sunday with his with his family. Mm. Mm. Okay. So I know that you went sporadic during the week. Uh, we kept missing each other, you and I, because uh -huh. I was going in the morning. So oh, okay. you were like, you're in the evening, whatever. Yeah. We're, it, it just seemed like a Masters, I heard, was there. John Morrison was there. Yeah. Like, uh, I felt like people were coming in shifts mm -hmm. looking for him. I mean, that was just a horrible three days. And at the same time, I feel like 
the fact that it took that long to get the body, it almost went from an acceptance of, okay, we're no, we're accepting he's gone. Mm -hmm. Now we just want the body. Yeah, for closure. For closure. Yeah. And I sometimes think like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm I'm religious. I feel like maybe that was God's way to prepare mm -hmm. um, many of us, you know, to yeah. get to the point where you can accept. Okay, now I just want the body because had the body shown up Sunday or Monday, it would just been oh a lot. It would have been a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. So then the body shows up on Wednesday night at one thirty. Mm -hmm. um, what I felt was special was I found out that the time the body showed up was at 1.30 in the morning was the same time that his mother had passed in 2015. Oh, wow. 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 I didn't know that. Mm. When I heard that, I was like, man, that's that's like a sign mm -hmm. that they're together. Yeah. You know? Um, so... You know, we just, it's, it's almost one of those things trying to find solace in, in something like this. Um, again, you know, doing this show, it's more about talking about his memory, talking about the impact. And I, again, I wanted you to, because you were his partner forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys came in together and it's in 2006, right? That you were signed at a OVW. Yeah. 2000, the summer of 2006, I got signed. Um, that's what we just, they just put Chad and I together. So you didn't know each other at all? No, we knew each other. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, when I first, he gave me my first apartment in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, you got to yeah. tell me. Let's go back before then, before yeah. crime time. Before crime time, I, uh, I was 19 years old and um, I went to uh, one wrestling school before that and then everybody was, everybody was talking about OVW. OVW was the place to go. OVW is where everybody's getting signed. Brock Lesnar. John Cena, I'm hearing all these big names. I'm like, yeah. okay, I need to go down to Louisville, Kentucky. Me being a city kid from Brooklyn, Louisville was a, definitely a culture, culture, <laughs> a culture yeah. shift. And I didn't want to go. So at first, instead of moving there um, right away, um, I would take the Greyhound bus on mm. the weekends. From New York? From New York. How long is that trip? 18 hours. Holy yeah. commitment. Yeah, I was taking the bus. Um, wow. So I worked at AMC in Times Square. And I was the many times yeah, there. Wow. I, worked, I worked there, and you have to work weekends. It's like you're to work at the movie theater. Our busiest is Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. And then um, I explained to them, like, look, I, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. Like, now nah, I'm trained to be a professional. I'm going to be a professional wrestler. I need the weekends off. You're like, you can't do that. Then you can't work here. Then I said, you know, please come. I'm going to work. I could work doubles throughout the week. I just need... And the bus station is right there after yeah. work. I could go. It's, it's very convenient for me. I really appreciate if you do this for me. And then you know, I, I talked to them, like, I'm going to come back when I'm a big star, you know. No, <laughs> like, I, I really, like, and, they, was, and they, they gave me the pass. So after work, I would uh, jump on the bus to go, go to um, Greyhound Station. And then I'll be in Louisville uh, early. I will get there early, like, around 12 midnight. Um, and then... I would be in the bus station for hours, mm. and then I'll take a taxi to, to the um, to class to train for two hours, and then back to New York City. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and then that's where you met. No, no. I was doing that for a while, and then my um, bus was breaking down. You know, because the winter came, but the bus was breaking down. I was late. I was showing up, doing all that traveling, and showing up the last. 20 30 minutes of practice oh god and the trainer was like look if you want to do this you're gonna have to move here it's like you can't just keep taking the bus because yeah, how long were you doing that for a few months i can't remember exactly but okay. it was a few months you know they saw potential in me and he was like you got potential you got charisma you know you gotta put some size on i think i was like 180 or something hey, you have put size on <laughs> but you know you have a, you, but you have yeah, you have you have charisma yeah so you're gonna have to move out here and then as uh, i did uh, first i moved into a um um, hotel there's a lot of wrestlers went there it was called the suburban lodge a lot of the wrestlers went there yeah they stayed there but i was like gonna go to live there and then um i think uh it was ivory i believe it was ivory oh my god ivory. yeah uh, i think me and her spoke and i told her my situation and i think she spoke to shad and then shad found out and he was thinking about moving and then um he was like i have a, a one-bedroom apartment I'm, I'm gonna move out and you could you know take over the take over the lease and he gave me my first apartment oh that's awesome so i was out of the the, the motel and wow. i had my 
I was 19 years old with my first, uh, wow. <laughs> first apartment. Yeah. Wow. How yeah. did that feel? Do you remember that? It was. It was. It was very liberating. Felt free. Yeah. Yeah. And I had my own apartment. Like I had to be. Like a grown yeah, up. I know, right? I had to mature, <laughs> I had to mature up very quickly. You know, cooking from I had to clean cooking, cleaning. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of responsibility at at 19 years old. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys didn't move in together. No, we didn't move Just, in together. Okay. Yeah. But had you known him? Before that, or yes, um, I met him at my first amateur show. Um, I was introduced to him through Elijah Burke. I don't know if you remember Elijah. I remember Elijah. Yeah, he introduced me to Shad, and um, from there it was like a little brother, big brother relationship. He's like, "So, where are you from?" He's like, "Oh, I'm from Brooklyn." I'm like, "Oh, what part?" I'm like, "Flatbush." Oh, and like we just—it was just the universe. The, the stars were just aligning. Like we were yeah. the same area, same, same background. You know, single mother. Uh, background we were both raised by our by our older sisters mm. and we just had a lot in common so when they did put us as a, a tag team it just clicked everything just made sense yeah and we were friends before we were um a tag team gotcha yeah. that's yeah. awesome so yeah. when they decided to put you guys as a tag team were you guys excited um it was kind of i was i almost wanted to quit i was i was there for a while and i was just just down i, w- I was like very i was like depressed because really? being in Louisville, Kentucky, no family, um, and then they, I think it was it was Paul Heyman's decision, Al Snow and Danny Davis, to, to, uh, you know, put us together. Mm-hmm. And when I found out, I was I was like, all right, this is something. We we already have a good relationship. This yeah. this could think to something. This could. Uh, so you were depressed because things weren't going. Things going my yeah 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 I wasn't like in, Lu- in Louisville Kentucky they have OVW TV you wanted to be on local TV I was in the um, I advanced from the amateur class to the intermediate class yeah. and then I was training with the um, contract class that's where you you want to train with the contract class so you could eventually be on on um, OVW TV right and then get noticed you know I wasn't even on on the on TV yet so I was just there lingering and then um, do you remember th- how long that was it was a few months. Uh, but I was in uh, I was in OVW. What year did I get there? I got there when I was nineteen, um, and then I got signed when I was twenty-one. Mm, so you were there a good year, two years. Two years and yes, a little bit more than that. Yeah, and when I, you don't know yeah, how it, things are gonna look and be, and is it yeah. gonna be worth it? And yeah, and I was young, and, and I, I didn't know. You know, tw- I got signed when I was twenty-one. You know, I, that yeah. was like I, I thought I was gonna. You know, it was just. <laughs> it was when I got signed. I was like, "Is this? How? It was so surreal, at yeah. 21 getting signed." But yeah, oh, I will, and then uh, when we got called, we had we had a blast. You know, we got into a lot of trouble, but we, <laughs> overall, we yeah. Had a blast. So tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to hear about the trouble. Yeah, I mean that's part of growing up. Yeah, You're it's so part of growing young. up. Yeah, yeah. 21 yeah. on the road. We were making pretty good money, uh, fame, um, being on TV every week. Um, it was a lot at, at 21, but I, I think I, I think we handled it all right. You know, we didn't do mm-hmm. anything crazy. Um, we did get a, get into a few trouble. We did get fired, but the, the, yeah. the fans uh, demanded you, us back. What, can can you say why you got fired? Oh, we got uh, we got into a situation um, with another tag team. You remember Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch? Mm-hmm. A rib gone bad, and um, we put our hands on the referee. You know, we did our finishing move on the referee. I don't know if you remember that. Right, I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. They were like, do not touch the ref. Referee, big no-no. And then, you know, we had to, we got released and we were gone for about six months. And then we came back the day after WrestleMania. And that was one of the best reactions we got. Um, well, I'm going to say the second best reaction we ever got uh, what was from, the from the crowd. The best was um, working Chris Jericho and Big Show. It was a show in New England. And we were the semi-main event. And the crowd was just, the, you could, you were stomping their feet, crime time, crime time. And Jer- I remember, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Chris Jericho looked at me like, wow, you got that road warrior pop. I never knew what that, <laughs> what that was, but I, through, yeah. what, but, uh, through the years of being in the wrestling business, like a road warrior pop, that's like a, that, that's a loud, it's like very loud, but the whole arena, the crowd was stomping. You could hear them in the back. We were in the back. In the yeah. I don't, like we, I, it wasn't even our time to uh, perform yet. Oh, wow. But we were doing so good on, um. On television, this the segment with us and Big Sh- uh, with Big Show and Jericho 
for the tag team titles, it was like they were like it was it was our time. They thought we were gonna get the titles, yeah. And the crowd was so loud. I'm like, wow, we're over, man. This feels great. Oh, <laughs> this feels great. That's awesome. <laughs> this feels great. It does feel good. Oh, man, yeah. When you're over. When There's... you're a fan favorite, it's like it's, it's better than being a, to be honest. It's better than being a champion. You know, they could put the title on anybody, but you can't make the crowd love you. And that's what we had. That <laughs> you know, I was gonna say because you guys never got the tag titles, mm -mm. which surprised me. Here I was doing research, and I'm like. Wait, these guys never got the tag team. We, we stole them. We had them for a few them, months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we stole them. We had them for a few months. And, uh, but no, the, the, the being fan favorites, that's, that's the best feeling. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, so let's talk about the stealing because, <laughs> I mean, Crime Time was hilarious. Yeah. You guys even came, it was so funny when you came to ringside and Shad walks over to me and goes, Lillian, <laughs> we're going to sell you. Well, your chair. <laughs> that was one of our favorite uh, segments. And that was in Madison Square Garden, our hometown. Yes. And um, that was, I think that was our first time performing in uh, MSG. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. And we were able to have a segment. We cut a promo. We had a match. We, I, that's, I, we, we had celebrities involved. We sold the chair. They didn't ask for the money back. We got back safe. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, we got, really works, man. Yeah, we got our we got our dinner money for the night. <laughs> well, I can't remember how much that, but you guys got quite yeah, a bit. Was quite a bit. Yeah, it was quite a bit. That was like hundreds to and then I remember going, wait, am I getting a piece of this? <laughs> <laughs> My bike was chair. sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good oh, time. The good freaking times, mm. dude. It's just it's so much fun to go back and reminisce and think mm. about that and the yeah, that's what's been helping me uh, get through this get yeah. through this time right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Talk to me, like, because some people, when this something like this happens, it hurts them mm -hmm. to see footage. But you say fans have been sending you lots of footage, and it's it's yeah, it's definitely you. helped me through this time. Um, also, I have, like eight, like I was saying before, eighty percent of my phone is with videos of Shad and me. Um, you know, just. Like we were more than tag team partners, you know. We became we were friends, and then, and then eventually we were just brothers. Like his son is my nephew. His his oh, wife is my. Yeah. I consider her my sister in law. We were just tight. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. I know you said that you haven't grieved, and then you said that you haven't gone through this before. Yeah, I've been on this planet for thirty five years. I've never lost somebody this close to me. Where you know you engage with them every day. You know, where you shared the most intimate stories with them, you know, and, um, you know, I've lost family, I've lost distant uncles and, you know, grandparents, but, you know, they're older and it's like, you know, I don't want them to be here and suffer. Right. So, you know, you, you know, when they transition, you know, you're like, okay, they're at peace. Um, I've lost coworkers, you know, but, you know, yeah. we lost a lot of coworkers, but it never really hit home at home like this like this yeah has it helped to have like shelton was here the other day yeah it definitely helps yeah kofi came as well mm -hmm. for the ezekiel memorial. ezekiel jackson ezekiel ziggler was came and his brother uh ryan nemeth yeah we had a um, morrison morrison yeah. yeah it was great to see that it was great to see damien or everybody. aaron stevens aaron Damian's, stevens as everybody knows damien sandow yeah. was there which is great yeah. it felt so good to be there on the beach for that memorial it was so beautiful yes can believe everything that came together. Yeah, they so hooked fast. that up last minute, real good. Oh yeah. my gosh! And it was to, see, to see all those um, friends and family fill that beach up. Yeah, during I this think time. they said like five hundred people came wow. or something. Yeah. yeah, it was it was so beautiful. Uh, but being able to celebrate and a celebrate his life, but then celebrate also seeing each other. Like we haven't seen each other in so long. Yeah, you know, and then realizing we need to not allow time to go by so much before we see each other and do something mm -hmm. and all that again. <clears throat> I think it's a, a constant reminder and somebody was talking to me about death and <clears throat> how horrible it is. I said, it is, but if we didn't have death, mm -hmm. we would not appreciate life. Mm -hmm. We'd be yeah. taking everything for, for granted. granted yeah. 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 Is there a silver lining that you've been able to see yet, not from his death, but but something that has been put into perspective at all this week? Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I have like, there's a lot of mixed emotions. Um, I can't like, I'm, I'm trying to see like the, like you said, I'm trying to see the silver line, but I don't know if I've, uh, yeah, got I mean, there yet. Right. I yeah. mean, there, it's hard to see a silver lining in this, yeah. especially with Araya mm -hmm. and all. Um, but I have seen a lot of love come of it. Mm -hmm. I have seen a lot of people, you know, 
not only love for him, uh-huh. but showing a lot of love to Siliana and, yes. and to Araya, where they're not going to feel alone. Uh, Tamra, my God, his sister, was amazing. Yeah. His sister's amazing. <clears throat> his dad, yeah. incredible. And then them going, oh my gosh, like we didn't realize he was that loved. loved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. beautiful that they get to see that mm. too out of this. But you said you guys were raised by single moms. Yeah. Tell me your story. So you're from Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. Brooklyn, you- New York, Flatbush, Parkside. Um, and at the, as soon as I graduated high school, um, like I was, it was in that, during that time and where I came from, it was kind of embarrassing to say, oh, I want to be a wrestler. It's like, are you serious? Because to them, it's like, it was too big of a dream. It was mm-hmm. like, you're going to be a wrestler. So at the time I was acting, you know, I, uh, when I was in high school, I would miss some days of school and I would do some extra work because I wanted to be a, a actor. Yeah. But I, deep down inside, I wanted to be a wrestler, but I thought... Uh, but that acting, was the cool thing to yeah, do. Yeah, acting was the cool thing to do. And there was no... Um, at the time, I couldn't find any um, uh, wrestling schools in New York. And then when it came time around senior year, I was like, all right, so, you know, guidance counselors, friends and family, like, so what are you going to do? Are you going to college? And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to go to Juilliard and be an actor. But I didn't really want to do that. Mm-hmm. I was just saying that. Um, you don't play sports. I didn't play any sports prior to wrestling. So, really? Yeah, I don't know how, where this athletic ability came from. Wow. <laughs> came from. Yeah, I didn't know I could drop kick until I got in the ring and I was do or die. And, yeah. That's amazing because most wrestlers have had have some kind of athletic background. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Any, yeah. Interesting. It was okay. like, are you going to the army? Are you going to the navy? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then it was like the pressure, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a WWE superstar. I'm gonna be a wrestler. And they were like, all right, well, okay. You need a plan B. I'm like, oh, I don't need a plan B. I'm gonna be a wrestler. That's it. And um, everybody kind of like, oh, okay. And then my um, my my best supporter, my mom, she mm. supported me. And yeah. Wow. She helped me get through this. That's awesome because <laughs> you... Yeah, my mom was a big wrestling fan. My mom, and, Yeah, my mom and dad was, uh, were big wrestling fans. My mom still watches it uh, up to this day. Uh, my mom would take me to Madison Square Garden. It used to, in the 80s and early 90s, used to run every month, and we would go every month. You know, Across the street, we would go wow. get tacos. There was a place, a taco stand. We would get tacos, sneak them in her purse, and we would go, and my sister go watch uh, Hulk Hogan and the... The rockers, early, early memories. Yeah, <laughs> it's wild because I remember when I moved here from Spain, I was eight, and I think it was either a somewhere between eight and ten, mm-hmm. and I got into wrestling and okay. remember watching it on TV and just being so amazed by yeah. it. And then Dad surprised me with tickets to the Township Auditorium, and I got to oh, see wow. Andre the Giant <laughs> and Ric Flair, uh-huh. and I remember that sitting in the stands. It's so wild how, as a kid, it could be so vivid, mm-hmm. and. It's it's wild that I ended up ring announcing. I mean, I didn't know I didn't sit there and go. I yeah. want to be a ring announcer, you know, uh-huh. wrestler. But but for you being a kid, mm-hmm. experiencing that, and then all of a sudden here you are performing at MSG. Yeah, I know that's why I had it when we when the first time I went. To, um, that was actually the second time going to MSG when we first debuted our um, our vignettes. Mm-hmm. It was at MSG, and the first time we performed at MSG, um, I remember taking a lap around the around the building because I made a promise to myself at Wrestlemania 10 I was at Wrestlemania 10 when um Chris Benoit won the title oh wow and I was like I'm not going to come back into into this building until I'm performing here wow. so it was, it was a few years and then um I uh I took a lap and I was like reminiscing as a child like yeah oh, I used to uh, my mom would buy like the high tickets and like buy the cheap tickets yeah and then we would just scour lower down to see if there was any like empty seats and we'll move down there until we until the, 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 the security yeah security yeah like you see yeah. your tickets and we're like oh we go back to our <laughs> seats <laughs> was your mom there when you performed at msg oh yeah she had yeah. to be there yeah she was screaming that's my son she let the whole <laughs> section know that uh, <laughs> that was her son in the ring yeah well, of course oh my god that had to be so special yeah. that's crazy that's what dreams are made of yep. i mean when you walked in there I don't want to glaze over it because it's such a big deal. Like when you knew you were going to perform that night, mm-hmm. did it bring tears to your eyes or afterwards or anything like where you're like, holy cow, I did it? Yeah. I just, when I'm performing and it's like, it feels so real, it feels um, so surreal. 
I like to uh, take a deep breath and inhale. It's like something I'm get, like it's like an energy I get. You know, I take like I, that's, it's similar to what the Rock does. I would just yeah, say, when, when the Rock is on, of, yeah. yeah, when the Rock is on, he does that sniff. He's 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 absorbing the energy. It's not right. just a it's not just it something he does. Yeah, it is yeah. true, and it's thick too. You can feel it. Like when you feel it go through, you get goosebumps. It's like wow. Yeah, I've asked some of the guys that, you know, are performing now to empty arena, you know, uh -huh. or the performance yeah, center to get know that. what you're not getting. <laughs> They're like, it's so weird. Yeah, it's very like, weird. Yeah, we're going out there. Even Kofi was telling me, he goes, we're cutting promos and it's just, you're getting zero reaction. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, it, I can imagine it's so hard. Right. The, the the arena, the, the fans are everything. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, it's just, it goes hand in hand. So growing up then, um, did you know your dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He lives with me now, yeah. Oh, he does? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Cause, yeah. But you say you were raised by a single mom. Yeah, I was raised by, I was raised by my mom and sister, but then my mom, like before I was born, my dad was separated. Before you were born? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you didn't have a relationship with him? I had a relationship. Mm. He, I saw him you know, every, every now and then, yeah. Okay. And I would spend, spend a weekend with him and come back, but I was majority was raised by my... Did did could you process that as a kid? Um, I did because I saw a lot of I saw a lot of that going around. You know, I saw a lot of you know a lot of my friends had was just raised by their mom and, and siblings. So it's normal. It was normal, yeah. Well, that actually makes it uh, a little easier. Yeah. 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 So you don't create an animal. Yeah, I mean, like when you, you watch TV, when you watch, you know, you see <laughs> the beavers <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Exactly. It's, it's kind of like, oh, we're supposed to be a unit here. What's going? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, th did you ever have conversations with your dad at all? Like, oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah. of course. I understand now. Now I understand. Um, you know, I understand my mom's perspective. I understand my dad's, pers mm -hmm. dad's perspective, and you know, I, I think it was better. I, I like. I, I don't. I wouldn't change anything. That's good. Uh, yeah, I like. But who were I, you at first? A little bit as a bitter. kid, yeah. As a, yeah. No, I wasn't bitter. I, at first, as a kid, I wanted my um, my mom and dad together. You're confused. Um, yeah, you wanted that. I wanted that, and then as I got older, I'm like, mm, I think this is this is how it's. I think this is it. Yeah, yeah. Because some kids, when they go through that, mm -hmm. uh, they don't know how to process it, uh -huh. and then they get bitter at the whole situation uh -huh. or angry or whatever with my parents uh, they were together but they mm -hmm. fought okay. so much that mm -hmm. that was hard to watch okay that's how i got affected so okay. sometimes if it's gonna be like that it's not great yeah, if they were dead if they were definitely together there would have been a lot of fighting so i didn't i didn't get to see get to see that yeah. yeah um all right so what was your biggest struggle then growing up i mean how was school or, or um, one of my, well, this is going to tie right into Shad. One of my biggest struggles, um, growing up that Shad helped me with, I actually put it in my, uh, my book. When I was growing, when I was, um, one years old, I got, um, the third degree burns in my back, hot water. Oh. Yeah. And it was, and I, as a kid growing up, I never wanted to take my shirt off. I was like very, uh, conscious of my back. I didn't want to show my back at all. Um, like when we were in high school, played yeah. basketball, all right, shirts versus, uh, Skin. Oh, skins. I was like, shirts. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm playing shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Pool. I want to wear. I want to wear my tank top. Uh, I didn't. I, like, why do you want to take, take a shirt? I'm like, no, I don't want to. Like, how no, did the burn happen? It was an accident. My um, sister was uh, picked me up early um, from the babysitter, and I think I sold my diaper, and she wanted to give me a bath, and the water was too hot, and I don't think she. Uh, like I don't know the full story. I was. I mean, I was. I don't even remember. I'm oh, just you going, were a baby. Yeah, I was a baby. Yeah, oh, and I was okay. in a hospital for six months or a year what? or something like that. Yeah, it was bad. And then um. Well, this I, isn't just like some little. Bird. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was on my back. Yeah. Okay. So that's what also prevented me from also wanting to be a professional wrestler. Like you have to take your shirt off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. And that was one of the questions, one of the, uh, I think I had this discussion with Jacqueline. Was it Jacqueline? She was down on OVW, too. I had that discussion I with Jacqueline. her. Yeah. I was like, if I wrestle, do I have to take my shirt off? And she, I remember her saying, why don't you want to take it off? It's like, yeah. you know, you have to show your body off. And then I told her, and she was like, you'll be, you'll be fine. Don't, don't worry about it. But I, I didn't, I think she was just telling me that. I don't know. Yeah. And then I remember um, Shad and I, Shad was the first person who taught me how to, taught me um, how to work out. You know, so we were working out. And um, we was putting a lot of hours in at the gym, and I was getting great results. 
And so he was, he was my, um, my second amateur show, me and him. That was the first time me and him teamed together. Mm-hmm. And then um, we were a tag team. We wore jeans. We're kind of similar to what we, how yeah. we look now. Um, we came, and I, it was our first tag team match, my first tag team match. And he's like, all right, man, so you ready to go out? I was, that was our time to wrestle. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. He was like, all right, let's take our shirts off. Like, there was a mirror right there. Let's see how we look. I was like, I'm not taking my shirt off. He was like, what do you mean not taking your shirt off? <laughs> yeah. You know what hours we put in the gym? <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> you got your shirt off. Yeah, you got to take your shirt off. Vince wants bodies. He's like, no, I'm not taking my shirt off. I can't explain it to you now. I'll tell you after, after the match. He was like, no, you're taking the shirt off. And at this time, Shad was already on, on TV. Oh. So he didn't have to do this. It was an amateur class. It was kind of like, he was doing, kind of like doing me a favor, kind of like. Right. But yeah, because I was able to say, oh, I'm coming out with a... a um, local TV star. Yeah. So he didn't have to do it, so he didn't care. Um, um, but because of our relationship, you know, he, he was going to be my partner. Yeah. And then, before we went out, we was going through the curtain, he was like, I'm not going out. I was like, shout out, music's about to play. He was like, we're not going out. Take your shirt off. I'll stay right here. You go out there by yourself and have yourself a handicap match. Whoa! Take your shirt off. I'm like, Shad, I can't do this right now. He was like, my back. He was like, what's wrong with your back? You hurt your back? I'm like, no, I have a burn. He was like, take it off. Let me see. Nothing's wrong with it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and then I'd like... With the shirt off? He's yeah. like, let's go? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was, it was like, kind of, we were at the current. Our music played. He was like, you going you to you put it back on? I'm like, Shad, let me put it back on. He was like, all right, then. You go by yourself. I dropped the shirt. We went out. And... No one noticed nothing. It was all in my head. There you go. It was all in my head. Wow. <laughs> he liberated you. Yeah. From that moment, you didn't care? What? I was from. I was in WWE in front of millions of people wrestling yeah. in, in briefs. Yeah. It was all in my head. I never noticed Nobody anything. Nobody noticed anything. Yeah. Never. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, like, <laughs> did I ever see anything? But no, I never noticed anything. Mm-hmm. Wow. Is it big? Huh? It's, it's from... It's, it's just it's just darker than than the and then rest. Of, at, yeah, okay. Yeah, so just, it's like, but in your mind, it's it was bigger than yeah, yeah. It's like your whole back. Yeah. Wow, liberating. <laughs> that is so beautiful. That was though the kind of guy. Yeah. Shad was. You know, Shelton the other day was saying how Shad. He goes, I keep hearing Shad, and he goes, and it's nothing different than what he's always done, where he was like, get out of your own head, mm-hmm. go do. <laughs> Pop out like I don't you know one of my regrets here is that I never got his chasing glory story mm. So I don't know where Shad got that from but do you what got what the the positivity that although I've met his dad Oh, oh Tamara, but the That kind of thing of no, we're gonna do this anyway. Yeah, that, that developed um, Throughout like the last couple of years Shad's been very been very positive and um Helping a lot of and been helping a lot of people. I noticed. I, I think it was the L.A. when he moved to L.A. that happened, um, because we will go to like we will go to shows, mm-hmm. and he will go off his go out of his way to help. Yeah. Talent. Yeah. Especially guys who are his, his size, because he can relate. Like this is what you're doing wrong. I want to. And he will help them. You know, like, like Shad, man, we got our ma- we got to put our match together. You know, he's over yeah. there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's over there helping yeah. helping talent, and you know, and. I don't, I don't, it's like, I guess it's, I don't, I don't, cause I'm, I'm a spiritual guy. I think sometimes your higher self knows, you know, but consciously you don't know. Cause the last time we hung out, we hung out hard. It was three weeks ago and we, we, we just finished working out and, um, we, um, I was going, he was dropping me home Yeah. and he was like, no, nah, let's not go home yet. Let's hang out. I'm like, uh, I was kind of on the fence about it. I was like, yeah, let's yeah. go hang out. And it was because nothing was open because of the whole COVID situation. So right. we were just we were just gonna walk. We went to CVS, and um, I don't I'm not a big drinker, but he wanted to just drink and talk. I'm like, and he let me since I didn't want to. We was kind of like we always meet each other in the middle. I was oh, like, all right, nice. you get the you're gonna get alcohol. I'll let you pick the uh, pick the beer. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I know he likes Corona. I didn't see Corona. I'm like, you know what? Let's get those mango beers. And we, <laughs> mango beers. Mango beers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Steve Austin yeah. is right now yeah, going, he's like, mango what? beers. <laughs> I hope Steve Austin's not watching this. <laughs> uh, so Steve, we, then you have your beer, okay? <laughs> we got some mango beers. We got one case. He's like, all right, we're going to pound like, um, I think it was six in the case. And I was like, I'm only going to drink like two. He was like, there's six in here. Let's just do three each. And I'm like, oh, all right. 
and we walked for hours and we were just reminiscing really? and celebrating life. We were, we were talking about how happy we were. Oh. It was, it was just something, you know, we did usually, but this time it was like, we always, like when we always hunt, like when we traveled together, we talked about how happy he was. He talked about how, how happy he is with his family to be, you know, you know, be with it, be, be at home and do what he loved. Yeah. And that, that day was kind of like, it was just kind of like a, we didn't know, but it was our last celebration. We were just talking about how, how good we have it. Wow. We live in LA. He gets to go to the beach when he wants to with his yeah. son. He's teaching his son how to box. You know, he's pushing these projects that he has and he's getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, you talked about how much he loved his wife and um, playing video games with his son and being being home. He's like people looking at this COVID thing as a negative situation. Uh, the quarantine. Yeah, the quarantine situation as a as a yeah. negative. And, and I'm, we're over here. We're enjoying it. You know, we have our mask on and we're taking yeah. it down, sipping beer. <laughs> <laughs> sipping oh, beer. and the TikToks they were doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, oh, we did a TikTok. The last video that me and him shot was a TikTok. Oh, really? I yeah, seen I'll, I'll share with you. Maybe okay. you can plug, plug yeah, it in. Yeah, put it in. Yeah, for yeah, sure. The last video that me and him did together was a TikTok. Um, and we were buzzing at the time. Yeah. So oh, we, was that that was the, the day that you guys were doing mango beers. Yeah. <laughs> the day we were doing mango beers. Um, so we did. We went through one case, and we were having such a great time. He's like, "Let's do one more case, man." I'm oh. like, "All right." So we, that day, I drunk, I drunk six beers. And for somebody who doesn't drink. For somebody who doesn't drink, <laughs> <laughs> and that's after that we shot the TikTok. Oh my god. And then we, um, he dropped me home, and we hung out some more. Wow. We hung out some more, and we, we, we watched Netflix, and we parked in front of my house, and we watched a, episode, a few episodes of, um, what was it, this cartoon I, uh, I told him about that I loved. It's called Midnight Gospel, something mm -hmm. like that, and we watched like one or two episodes. He's like, I love this show. Thank you for telling me about it, and oh. I think he binge watched it uh, later on that evening. And then that, that was like the last time like we like we hung out, hung out. Yeah. After that, you know, we conversed over the, you know, we had conversations over the phone and text messages and pictures and videos going back and forth. But that was the last time we like hung wow. out, hung out. Wow, what yeah. a blessing yeah. to have that as yeah. your memory. Mm. What a blessing. I think you're right because he also, I know you posted a tweet that he, or a text that he sent you in January. And this was mm -hmm. right after Kobe Bryant passed, yeah, passed away, away, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you share in case somebody didn't see that? Oh, so said? after um, after Kobe Bryant passed away with his daughter, you know, that, that hit home for Shad, you know, and then he wanted to like really, you know, let the people that he loved and appreciated in his life know, you know, me and Sh um, he sent me a, he sent me a text and he's like, if I die tomorrow, if anything happened to me, just know I love you beyond past this life. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was kind of like, it was so, it, it was deep, but because of our relationship, when one, per when one person's deep, the other person try to make, make light of it, make a right. joke. So I said, right. I love you too, brother. And then I put a hashtag that we, we kind of say, I don't want to say because it's kind of inappropriate, but I, what we will say like something, because in Brooklyn, if you said something that's sentimental, you said something along the said something along the lines of pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so if I said, "Shadow, some nice shorts. Let me see the back. Does it got a zipper?" Yeah, but I have to say pause because you know you don't want right, to take it the right, wrong right, way. Right, right, <laughs> right. And that's a, it's a Brooklyn thing. Well, it, well, it's been adapted all over <laughs> the yeah. urban culture, but yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's awesome that he did that though. You've got yeah. great memories. I think that's a great lesson for all of us mm -hmm. to do is to tell our loved ones. Hey, just take a moment and say I do love you, and maybe that's also why it you're okay in this process. Like maybe mm -hmm. why it's why you haven't broken down, and who knows if you will or not. Mm -hmm. I always say if tears are gonna come or if they want to come, just let them out. Yeah, Don't yeah. fight them back. Just let them out. But. People grieve in different ways. Mm -hmm. So just because also don't think there's something wrong mm -hmm. if you don't grieve okay. or if you don't have tears because he left something beautiful for you to guys to have a moment, you know, like that and all the years, but then, you know, have that as your final moment and then a message like that. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, he's still with you. Yeah. He's still with you no matter what. Yeah, I still hear him roasting me. You still, <laughs> still hear him roasting, roasting you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we, we had a great time. Uh, I'm gonna miss that the, the pranks we did on each other like traveling together the first one to fall asleep We will get our cameras out and, and uh, put it on a, each put it in each other. I just live. I look at this guy Look at him sleeping. Oh, oh. <laughs> And we will, we will doodle on each other's face and give each other a black eye You know a lot of people that follow me on uh, Instagram. They've, they've seen it 
<laughs> what is the biggest prank that you remember? Oh, who got who? Oh, man, there's so many. Oh, there's one that we used to do a lot that I... I <laughs> <laughs> it was a favorite pastime. So when we do, um, we would do um, our shows on the road, and the promoter would usually pay me. So when the when the promoter pays me, um, I'll get the envelope, and I like Shad, I got your pay. And he's like, okay, good. And I'm like, oh, hold, hold, hold on, dance with me. <laughs> he's like, oh. and I'll do that to him every time. But when we did um, when we did like tables and we sell autograph and merch and stuff like yeah. that. Um, Chad would collect the money and then split it up because I'm bad with math. But he, he, was, he was amazing with math. That's one oh, thing really? about Chad. He was great with math. So I, let, wow. I trusted him. We trusted each other. I let him yeah. do, the, uh, do the, um, the counting and then split the money up. Right. And then like, all right, my money. He's like. <laughs> Dance with me. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. man. That's beautiful. We did a lot of, had a lot of practice. We did silly games. Um, I don't know, after one show. After a few shows, we would um, he he I think he was partners in a um, uh, uh, a marijuana company, so he would get edibles. Mm-hmm. And um, after a show, we'd do edibles, and we'll go to Red Lobster and binge eat. Because <laughs> it makes those, you yeah, so hungry. Oh my god, the munchies and <laughs> that those garlic those those cheddar biscuits. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that was something we would do. Yeah. <laughs> you want to eat? Yeah, yeah you want to enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. We'll, we'll eat our food so slow, enjoying it. Every taste, oh, I can taste the the, the, the ingredient. They put just them down. Yeah. Of in it. <laughs> well, I tell you, I have great memories with mm-hmm. you guys. Like even seeing this photo. Um, thank God for our fans who send us these things, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember going to Iraq with you guys. And and then you know we all get split up in groups. Mm-hmm. And when I found out that I was in the group, and you guys are like, like yeah, yes! you have some fun because the whole week we have to be together. Yeah, and we have to go from base to base to, to base, base and Black Hawk helicopters mm-hmm. and um, have these massive experiences. And I'm just so blessed that I got to have it with you guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this one thing about Shad, he wanted if he wanted to have fun and make sure anybody was around him was having fun. Yeah. Yeah, and we. Every um, fans and um, not only just fans, but um, independent talent. When we do shows, you know, they had fun with us. Mm-hmm. You know, even the locker room, we they became instant. They they loved us instantly after. Like man, I thought you guys were gonna have this big kind of like, oh, I'm a, I'm from the dope. You know, I'm a for, I'm a former W superstar. I have that type of attitude. Yeah. But you guys are so cool and down to earth and. You guys helped us and, you know, you didn't big dog us. Big league us, that's what they would say. Big yeah, league big us. league yeah. us. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Was this trip, I don't know, if, or were you on the trip that we got stuck, that the plane broke down and it was hours before, so we all went. W- were um, we in Germany? I well, can't. No, we were still in Iraq. No, I don't think I was on that. No? One. Oh, no. okay, because we were in Iraq and then the plane broke down and we couldn't leave Iraq for hours so we went Ooh. out and they let us shoot like literally shoot out of tanks and i mean i was in the tank, oh, in shoot, the tank? shooting oh wow <laughs> i, I was the shooting tank. from the from the black hawk i remember that into the oh yes into the into the desert yes i, I remember that. that i was sitting yeah. right next to you yeah, yeah. yeah i remember that but i remember the tanks would have been fun <laughs> oh that was actually but it turned into like um you can keep the plane getting yeah, you know <laughs> stuck but but what what it for you what was the Biggest meaning going to uh, going Iraq. to Iraq, seeing the smiles that we put on those soldiers' faces, all oh, that meant so much. Is because they they were you know they didn't really have much going on. It was the same routine yep. all the time. Yeah. Um, the, the flies. The, I heard them. A lot of them complaining about the sand, the flies. It was like so many flies. The same the, the same food over and over in catering. So when they had um, when they found out you know WWE was coming to town. It was like yeah. what? Yeah. You know, and then we were there, and it was around us, just hanging out. There was no show; we were just hanging around. Right. And I could see the smile and the, the energy that, that was radiating, radiating mm-hmm. off, off of them. Yeah, and that, that that felt really good. I will say that when we did get home, though, I kissed the ground every trip. I was like, <laughs> "Wow, we have it good here. Yeah. We yeah. have it good here because there's a lot of dust." <laughs> a lot of, yeah, man. <laughs> My, my jacket, it still has dust on it from I Iraq. Know, I was just I, say, a year later, it's hung still... up. Yeah, it's still dust. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got good memories. Yes. 
<laughs> All right, so I know that you guys were together for a, for a while, and then you left, and then you came back. Mm -hmm. How was it for you when you came back? When you came back, where you're like, okay, well, we got to make sure, A, don't touch the referee. Don't touch the referee, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> were there other things that you guys were like, okay, all right, we got to do this better or that or... Um, do you get scared to come back in any way and, and have that yeah, happen again? We were, we were walking more on eggshells the first couple of months. Walking on yeah. eggshells, you know. You, you already know what the wrestling um, wrestling etiquette is like. There's a lot of unspoken rules. So, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, was, it, it was on the road for a while, but there was still something that we had to, uh, to learn. Yeah. Um, but we adjusted pretty quickly and... You know, we that second run was a, was a lot more fun than, than the first one. Yeah. Mm. So why was it that he was sent? Because uh, he was sent to then. Was he sent to FCW? Yeah, he was sent to FCW. Yeah. How come he was sent to FCW? You stayed. Because they they wanted him to work more. Uh, they sent down FCW because they wanted him to work more of a big man. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't want him to work more of the um, uh, big man style. You know. What does that mean? Big man style, like his height, his size. You know, we, we work, they work different than, you know, me or like a Kofi Kingston. Okay. And I think, you know, he didn't uh, uh, adapt to that right away. So they sent down to FCW, you know, to, um, to help it. him out with that. Yeah. But then for a while he was gone and then and, you... And then I stayed, yeah. Now, why was that? How was that? No, why was that? Like, why oh, did they they... They, they, they... they split us up. I think we both at that time wanted to, um, to split up when they split us up. I think we both wanted because we did the crime time thing. We, we know that was easy for us. That was fun. Yeah. It was cool, but we, th we thought it, uh, we kind of thought it ran its course. Mm. Um, so we wanted to see how we would do as single stars. And um, Were you excited then to try to do singles? Yeah, I was, I was excited, yeah. yeah. Um, that, was, that was cool for a while. And then um, I was kind of like, damn, I, like I wanted to have a long, like a long feud with Chad. You know, we, we had a few, but it was kind of like, yeah, yeah short, -lived. short, short lived. And um, he went down to FCW and I'm like, OK, he's going to come, come back. They'll give him a big push. But I need to at that time, I need to, to focus on my career. At that time, I was still trying to figure out because um, I know I had I had the look, I had the charisma, um, but Am I going to still hold on to the crime time image? Yeah. You know, I was trying to, I was doing a lot of different things to, to uh, um, detach myself from that, from that. You just wanted a new fresh Yeah, I look. wanted new music. Yeah. You know, I took the braids out and I, and I hot combed my hair and I put it in right. a ponytail. You know, I was trying to get it far away from that. You know, I went from jeans to wearing leather pants. Right. And then I went from leather pants to wearing, um, back to jeans. And then I went from jeans to, to briefs. You know, I had a different, a lot, then I, yeah. different looks, yeah. Was it, like, was it, I'm trying to I was think trying to what, find myself, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. I was finding myself, yeah. And were you getting frustrated? Oh, yeah. You know, you pitching ideas over and over again. You know, some fall on deaf ears, some they like, but they give it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like. Not I, the first to say yeah, that. Yeah, you know, after pitching so many, you kind of get like, like you, um. You lose, kind of lose hope, and like you, you, you begin to think like they, they choose who they want to choose. You like, for example, Zack Ryder. I use him as an example a lot because he did everything to get got to get over, yeah. got over. He had his it was screaming his name throughout New York City on right. the train, out the out the at the arena during yeah. when the Rock is talking. They're ch they're chanting Zack Ryder it's like, okay, they got to push this guy. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, I interviewed Zach, and mm -hmm. we talked about that moment. Mm -hmm. You know what he said? He learned from that lesson. What was that? That I think, you know, I think the thing is, people, we need to realize there's a lot when things are not going our way. Mm -hmm. That's when we really need to dissect things. Mm -hmm. um, just like when MMA fighters have losses, they said they learn more from the losses than they do from the wins. That moment, he said, I learned that when I started seeing things sliding, mm -hmm. I did not walk into Vince McMahon's office and ask him, why? Mm -hmm. Why are you not pushing me? What is going on? Do you even know? Do you even, is there something I can do? He goes, I was so scared to face that man. Mm -hmm. And he said, I regret that moment because I feel like maybe I would have been able to do something. He goes, the thing is, is now I live with, I don't know. I yes. don't know if I would have ever, I just kind of like sat back and allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes 
we do that too, right? Sometimes we do speak up and it doesn't go your yeah. way. Oh, I definitely spoke up. But I know you spoke, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to Vince's office. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And that's good, but you'll never wonder. Yeah, I never See, wonder. He's got that in the back of his mind. Uh, okay. He's wondering. He's mm. wondering. However, he did get that in beautiful moment at WrestleMania, mm -hmm. the Intercontinental title. Now, I thought he was going to be able to keep that going for a while and mm -hmm. didn't realize he was going to lose it the next night. Yeah. Um, but he said, nobody can take that moment away yeah. from me. And he's got the photos to prove it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. exactly. And like you said, the crowd is the one that made you guys. Like a crowd validated you guys. Yeah. Um, Damien Sandow said the same, same thing. Yeah. WrestleMania, he's like... It's like I didn't need to win the battle royal. Like I, yeah. I was validated already with mm -hmm. the crowd, so that nobody can ever take that away from you. Did you like the crime time storyline? Did you like that? Because now I, I think somebody had said it, it'd be too stereotypical. Yeah, we can't do that. At, at that during that era, it was good for that era. You know, when um, when Vince, when Vince, I, this is what I was told. Because um, at that time, Dave Chappelle was hot, hot. Um, so we would, we, Chad and I shot a skit down in OBW, and it was very uh, Comedy Central, Dave Chappelle-ish. And um, he never saw me wrestle, and mm -hmm. he saw the skit. The writers were laughing, and he's like, Vince got to see this. They showed it to him. He was like, oh, they, they look good. Let's bring him up. We're like, and they were like, well, he's not signed. Um, the big guy signed. That's Chad. He signed. Well, sign the little one. Let's bring, let's bring him on up. Never wow. saw me wrestle. He just liked the, um, our on-screen um, chemistry together. And I was, I got the call. I was at, I was working at Gold's Gym at, in the daycare at the time. You were? Yeah, so I could get, wow. so I could work out free. Wow. <laughs> so I worked in the daycare and I'm opening up the nursery and I get a call from a, um, it was an unknown number. I didn't, I don't pick up private calls. And then it was a 203 number. I'm like, that's Connecticut. Yeah, I better pick up, and this pick call. up the phone. <laughs> he picked it up and it was, it was uh, head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis. And I'm still, I'm, at, I'm still thinking it's a rib because a lot of guys been ribbed like this before. Have they? Yeah, where well, they got the, they got a call and they, like, they got hired and then they're like, oh, I'm just kidding <gasps> with you because they, because John, John Lauren Ice's voice is very yeah, imp distinctive, yeah, yeah, and, and you could also impersonate it very, right. very easily. But when I got the, um, can you hold? And I started hearing like WWE theme music in the background during the hold. I'm like, oh, this is real. And, you know, he asked for my passport information. I'm like. His assistant asked for the passport information. I'm like, oh, this is real. Okay, I just got signed. You're like, oh, oh my, god. my god. I'm like, I just, oh, the kids are screaming yeah, in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, no. Serious business here. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, that was that was amazing um, feeling. I think the first person I called was my mom. Oh. Let her know. Shad called me right afterwards. He came. Actually, he came. He called and he came to my job. And, you know, we hugged. He was like, you got signed. Let's, you know, let's keep the ball rolling. Wow. Yeah. And your mom. Oh, I can't even. I, yeah, once you tell her, she tells everybody. I don't need to tell. Go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. She's like one of those kind of moms. Yes. Yes. That's why when we made our second debut, I couldn't tell her. She was at home watching. Because if I told her, like, it was supposed to be a surprise. So if I oh. told her, you know, she's not, she's yeah. not holding it in. Yeah. So the second one, and she was just watching TV, watching Roy. She always does, and she saw me on the screen. And um, she lost it from what I, <laughs> from what I heard. Oh yeah. man, that's yeah. a gift. But what a supporter! <laughs> yeah, to do that for you, to do like, be like, you know what? This is a dream you have. It is far fetched, but you know, other people have accomplished it. Why can't yeah. you? I love that. That yeah. and that's I talk about that here about support. Support means everything. Mm -hmm. it, it, a child. You can't have a child live the parent's dream. Yeah. The child has to live their own dream. The exactly. parents already had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, if it was up to my mom, she, she, she my mom was a correction officer. And oh, I, if really? it was up to her, she, she would want me to be a correction officer. But when I told her I wanted to be a wrestler, she supported me <laughs> all the way. What did she ever want to do? Do you know? What was her dream? My mom's dream? That's a good question. I'm going to ask her. <laughs> I'm going to ask her when I get home, yeah. What was her dream? Well, I know it was her, one of her dreams was to come to America. Yeah. Oh. And, and where's she, she from? My family's from Trinidad. Both my parents oh. are from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, since we put this, usually I do this whole bio thing uh -huh. before, but since we put this show together um, mm -hmm. so quickly so that we could go ahead and air it, since Shad is screaming in my ear, you better <laughs> do this. Um, I didn't get to, to do all that research yeah. as to where your family's from. So, wow. What yeah, was yeah. life for her there? Did she tell you? Well, she was the oldest, and she, and my, um, she had a gang of brothers, so she had to take care of all of them. All of them. 
Wow. And um, I think uh, my grandparents had separated, so she was kind of like the mother, the mother figure. That prepared her to be a single mom. Yes, exactly. Isn't that wild? Yeah. In our life, things prepare us for what's coming mm -hmm. so many times. So with you and Chad, was it all you guys always get along? Like, is of it? Of course not. You know, no. we were brothers. Brothers, brothers fight. We have disagreements. Um, I give you, uh, but this will tell you how what kind of person Chad. Is. I remember one time, um, Chad and I stopped talking, um, and I had a. I had, I had a breakdown. My car broke down. Mm -hmm. And my mom knew how me and uh, tight Chad was. And she wasn't there to help me. You know, she's like, oh, my, my boy, he's, he's out there in Kentucky. I'm here. I don't know. I can't help him. Yeah. And she called Shad. She didn't know that we were, we were, we were not talking, but she called Shad because that's the, you know, the closest. Yeah. And um, I was stuck. I was stuck on, um, on the highway and Shad called me. And he's like, hey, your mom called me. How you doing? You good? You need help? And um, I was like, um, I think I have a, a AAA on the way. I think I'll be, be all right. I can't remember if he, if I, if he called AAA for me or some. I, yeah. I think he called AAA for me. Yeah. But even though we were talking, he we were mad at each other. He still looked out for me. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So you made up then? Huh? You made up? No, no, no. Not, not right then and there. But we eventually made up. It didn't take that long for us to make okay. up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know because I know a lot of tag teams. Yeah. Sometimes they go through that. Mm hmm. But you said it's but like it, a family. Yeah, at that time, you know, we were, um, there were when we were a lot younger, immature. You know, we didn't we, we didn't agree. You know, it was a lot of ego. But as we got older, we just you know we met in the middle. Yeah, you're not you're not always gonna agree, but as you get older, you know, you try you you just you know, I mean you learn to you know meet in the middle. Dude, I love that. Yeah, because there's so many people. Like with there. example with the beer. Like, I know you don't drink beer, so I'm gonna let you pick it out. Yeah, the mango beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gonna do mango. <laughs> <laughs> but that's beautiful right there yeah. that's a lesson too because so many people are so adamant of just having things they their were, way yeah and you can't do that no you can't do that you have to compromise mm -hmm. for you after wwe he'd already been gone for a while mm -hmm. how was that transition because i know myself it's yeah. not easy it's not easy at all no um it's 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 hard you, you, you try to find yourself you know again yeah you try to find <laughs> you try to find yourself again <laughs> yeah um you try to like you. You like what? Is, what are my passions? What do I love to do? Because um, you didn't want to continue wrestling anymore. Yeah, else. that you, when you get released, you kind of like you're, li you're a little bitter. You get a little, you're a little jaded. You're like, I don't want to wrestle again. And um, I, that's how I felt at the time. Like I feel. I don't know. I think that's how I feel like right now. Like right now, I was like, do I want to wrestle again? It's like I lost my my, my tag team partner. You like, you know, a lot of people ask me that. Yo, if, if the WWE was to call you back, but as a singles, would you go back? I'm like, no, I'm not going back to the singles. The fans want crime time. I want, you know, we want crime yeah. time. I will only it go back. It was rumored you guys were coming back. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, there was a lot. Yeah, there was a few rumors. You know, they, the last time we, um, we went backstage two years ago. You know, the, uh, the head of talent relations saw us and we look amazing. We look great. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh man, you guys look good. Um, we love to. You know, the doors always open. You know, you guys. We'd love to have you guys back. You know, there was talk, and then yeah. you know, emails were exchanged, and nothing ever became of it. Ah. Uh, and then I heard, also heard through the um, through the grapevine, they were, they were, our names were brought up a few times to bring us back. So recently, yeah. Oh, so, so I don't, I don't know. And then they reached out to us um, right when the co when the quarantine started. Um, like, hey, you guys want to do where uh, uh, where are they now? Episode, mm. um, and we agreed to. We were like, yeah, cool. Why not? But they never did it. We never did it. No, never shot it. Yeah. Oh, all right, but you now are thinking like, but you were thinking that if he was there, you would want to. Yes, absolutely. And now you're rethinking this. I, I, I'm rethinking wrestling. Do I want to wrestle? You know, um, but that's how I feel right now. You don't yeah. make decisions when you, you know, emotional. When, yeah, when you're emotional. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how I feel further down. Because what have you been doing? I mean, I know you've got the, the beard product, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What What is it? The Sexy as hell beard care. Sexy yeah. as hell. I like the name. Beard, beard and body, uh, uh, beard and skin care. So, oh, you, so not cool. only does your beard smell good, you get the matching scent with your uh, shea butter to go with the oh, body. Yeah, it's a whole awesome. it's an experience. Yeah, your skin looks great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sexy as hell beard care. <laughs> and skin care. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but what other what other things have you been doing? Um, a few projects I've been working on. Um, also, like I'm working on a, a episode series with one of my um, buddies 
uh, you know, the, the homeless, homelessness, homelessness being a big issue in um, in L.A. Um, I, I, an idea for a show came to mind, mm. and um, me and him are working on that. So hopefully, wow. uh, later this year or even early to, um, 2021, yeah. you know, we'll um, get that out to the public. That's awesome. Working on that. Um, the beard care. And we're, uh, on my birthday, I, I launched the app. Um, yeah, called what? Airsay. What is it? Airsay. Airsay. Yeah, Airsay it allows you to um, attach audio, your your voice, sound effects, and sound bites, and attach it to the image, and sh and, and, and share it as a um, as a tweet, Instagram post, or a text message. So I have a library full of uh, sound bites and sound clips, and I came up with the idea because I love roasting. Yeah. So, you know, if you watch the video, um, the trick, like the, the tutorial is me roasting Chad. Oh, yeah. wow. I got to say that. So th is that A-I-R? Air say, like air and then say. Air say. Yeah. And got I'm still, it. And I'm still adding some more features, features to it. Um, yeah. Get that trending as soon as I'm done uh, uh, updating that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's out now. Somebody it's out can now, yes. Yeah. It's, okay, it's in the App Store and Google Play, yeah. Oh, I'm totally yeah, going to see that. A lot of, I'm still working on it, so. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, are you glad, are you happy with your transition? You're finding yourself? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in yeah. a happy place, yeah. Well, Good. before the, all this happened, yeah. I was, right. <laughs> but you have your daughter. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, how old is she now? She's nine. Nine. Yeah. Awesome. When this happened with Shad, the yeah, I just, I just, I just broke that to her yesterday. You know, uh, me and her mom waited because she called him Uncle Shad, and she has a picture of us on her, um, in her room, and she also brags. You know, yeah. my dad, my daddy is uh, crime time, and his, and his partner is Uncle Shad. You know, yeah. And then, um, uh, telling my daughter on Facetime with her mom. You know, she broke down in tears. She broke down, and I'm like, oh, that hurt to see her. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where does she live? She lives in Boston with her mother. Oh, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe she was out here. No, you know, uh, if you were able to spend some time with her. Uh, well, with this quarantine. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I'm gonna see her soon though. Cause I, how how is that for you as far as being a dad through all of this through? the love of wrestling, trying to also find your legs afterwards. I mean, has it also been a struggle? Um, no, not, not really. No, I've been, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah. Good. I have my moments, but I'm overall, I'm doing all right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what, like, like if you felt like you had a child so young, like, you, you know, when you're still oh. trying to find yourself and growing and mm -hmm. you have this child to take care of at the same time. Yeah. I don't know what that's like because yeah. I wasn't able to get well, pregnant. We, well, well, being a spiritual person, everything happens for a reason. I had my child when I was supposed to have my child. Like, that's how, yeah. I, that's how I look at it. It's, 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 it made me who I am today. And I love who I am today. That's awesome. Yeah. And that was that after you left? WWE? So, yeah. No, um, I left WWE in 2014, and she was born in 2011. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Got it. But she was super young. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How has she changed you? I now understand what unconditional love is. At at, at a time, I didn't really un, like what's unconditional love. Like you love no matter no matter what they do is like that's bizarre. Like when they say that about a partner, like yeah, your wife, unconditional love. You supposed to love them unconditionally. I'm like I don't know because if she does that, I don't know if I'm a. <laughs> But with kids, it's like, no matter what she does, like, I'm your father, you're, you're a part of me. You know, we're going yeah. to we're gonna work, I, I love you. Yeah. yeah. It's so wild for me to think of you as a dad. Not, <laughs> not that I don't think you could be a dad, uh -huh. but I just see you as JTG, yeah. you know? <laughs> hey, how did that name come about? Okay, so when I was in the, uh, it's gone through an evol evolutionary <laughs> phase. So when I was in the, in the amateur class in OVW, I was like, one of the top students. So we have promo class, I'll be, and I'll end it with because I'm just too good, and then it would, JTG just too good. Oh. Yeah. And then when I went to um, uh, WWE, you know, they were asking me what what JTG stand for, and, and at that time, remember the unspoken rules. You don't you want you want to be humble. You don't want to say anything that will get you in trouble. Right. If I was to say I'm just too good, like oh, you think you're just too good? Hey guys, this guy thinks he's just too <laughs> good. It. Yeah, like oh gosh, he he. So I was like, uh, it, it stands for um, 
Just Too Gangster. Yeah, Just Too Gangster. And then I ran with that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. But I love getting the freaking story. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just Too Good, Just, just too, too Gangster. gangster. Yeah. I, I know what that feeling's <laughs> like, man. It's like, woo. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, something else that I absolutely love, though, is the fact of the fans. And we talked about how important they are. We talked about how great they are. Wow, this GoFundMe page. Yes, wow. You yeah, saw that, right? Yeah, I saw that. And I, we definitely have to give a... I don't know, I'm not 100% confirmed, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure. You know, there was a donation for uh, $40,000, and it was... It was uh, they said that... Um, person who donated the money was CTC, CTC RIP. And CTC was a, a faction between Crime Time and John Cena in, um, was it 2008? Yeah. And that was one, also one of the most fun, most fun I've, I've, I've ever had in the WWE was teaming really? with John Cena. Yeah, absolutely. Why? What, what made it so Because I learned so much during that. We, we were doing, Chad and I were doing rookie mistakes every night that we, we had no clue. Right. Um, and then teaming with him and making like little small changes. Mm. Um, like I remember, for example, uh, a tag team match. There was something I used to do um, before I start the match. I'll go out to the crowd, I'll lean over the rope and say, let's get this part, let's get it started, let's get it popping. Just to get a reaction. He said, uh, John Cena tapping the show, don't ever do that again, don't do that tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then he explained to me why it was, um, you don't need them to, uh, to, to validate you, you know, in the beginning, you don't you don't go for you don't go to them for um, validation. You let them validate you. Just do, just be, just be you. Mm. If, if that make yeah, if that yeah. makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So little I, stuff like that. Yeah. So what did you end up doing? Like, what instead of going to the crowd and do that, what what you do? I just I started the match. I started the match, and in between moves and in between um, uh, spots, you get your character over mm -hmm. and let the, and your character will be validated yeah. but it, it seemed forced like let's get it like you know let's get it popping right. like you're you're in the big leagues now you're 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 because we were at the time we were in the main event you're like you're gonna be in the, if you want to be a main event guy you know you don't you don't see uh you don't ever see me do like before the match started like come on it's our clap it's like no true <laughs> <laughs> i never saw cena do that exactly you're absolutely right <laughs> yeah no but when i saw that i think mm -hmm. it's well, as of this broadcast, this is Sunday right now. You guys are going to be seeing this um, coming up. But it was at uh, over 135,000. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's amazing. That's and amazing. they're going to need it. Yeah. You know, raising a 10-year-old kid is, mm -hmm. is not easy. And yeah. I know more and more help is going to come in. But it just shows them the love, right? And it shows them that they're not alone, Cillian mm -hmm. and, and Araya. Um, the family is like, whoa, what? In like yeah. one day's time, it was unbelievable. Like it, it made, met the goal. Um, and they didn't even put such a high goal, you yeah. know, to be able to sustain. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And they, had, they had a family business too. They, um, you know, Siliana was a, um, is an amazing cook and uh, they had a, a meals plan company. You know, she'll cook and he'll do the deliveries. And, I'm hoping yeah, that's going to keep going. I hope so too, yeah. Yeah, because I know they had the freezer and mm -hmm. all this or whatever. So yeah. I'm hoping, and I'm sure, I think with the help of everybody, that yeah. they could keep that going. Yes. Yeah, and his other projects. I mean, he was really getting yeah. strides going as an actor. Yeah. Uh, it was the, the one project, um, was the wrestling, he was working on a wrestling script. I mean, right now I'm drawing a blank on what the Pinfall. Name. Pinfall, yes. He was working on Pinfall. I watched the um, the table read for that. Amazing. Really? Amazing, yeah. I really do. Is it, does it look like it's going to get made? Um, I, I don't know. You, you know, know. You know he, had, he, was, he was going to a lot of a lot of pitches. I know he, um, they were going to another pitch meeting. His pastor, uh, his man was talking to his uh, manager. They had a pitch meeting, and you know they had to postpone that. I think they, I don't, I don't know what. Pro but he had a bunch of projects going on. He had yeah. one of the Haitian Revolution he was doing. I hear um, he was a great writer. Yeah, yeah. But his manager and I spoke. He goes, yeah. he was really good writer. Mm -hmm. There's things about him that I didn't even know that were happening behind the scenes. You know, we don't a lot of times know what people are up to. Yeah at all behind the scenes but i love that he had that and i love that you've had your stuff behind the scenes yeah. too and been able to find your way even you know transitioning and who knows what your continued chase for glory is going to look like yeah 
do you think that there's something from this whole event that <clears throat> it will leave you with that you have been left with um, so far that you have been able to process moving forward into your continued chase? Um, not saying that I didn't appreciate life before, but like, like the, the saying is, "Tomorrow's never promise." You gotta really appreciate the moment. Yeah. You know, really appreciate the moment, the people that you're close to in your lives. Don't be, you know, as a like, as a man, you know, it's very hard to like express express that, you know, especially to another guy. Right. Uh, you know, you know, even you know when Chad and I did it. We expressed it. We expressed it, but we will make a joke out of it, like just to lighten up the situation. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with exp you know being mm -hmm. a man and expressing how you feel about your your best friend, your brother. You know, let him know. Let him know. I love that, and yeah. especially coming from a guy, give him permission. It's okay to be vulnerable. Yeah, it's okay to love somebody. It's okay. Yeah. like I think we're we're too hard sometimes, yeah. and we need especially to. being a man in this in this uh, industry. <laughs> the industry, you're, yeah. You're 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 great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that, and I don't want to uh, definitely end on a on a down note, but I think it's important to bring this up because the news had come out that really bothered me as well. Um, mm. Hannah Kimura, mm. she you know Japanese pro wrestler. 22 years old she's on netflix uh terrace house um it's a reality show and there was just this scene or something that um was on her and another co-star going at it and then all of a sudden cyber bullying that she received from that mm -hmm. she ended up taking her own life from a reality show yeah so she wow. was on a reality show uh -huh. and but they they, they they reality show is not completely 100 percent reality it's not 100 i know so that's what i want to tell people yeah. is you got to understand reality shows a lot of time producers they want to create this drama. drama yeah to sell to people who want to watch drama, who I don't sometimes mm -hmm. wonder why you want to watch so much drama, but <laughs> that's another whole story. Yeah. But there was a scene apparently, uh, her and somebody else from mm -hmm. the house that went at it, mm -hmm. and so all the the tons and tons of people started cyberbullying mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. and yeah, she, I didn't know all the details. She at all. couldn't handle it. Yeah. And she took her own life. Damn, I'm so sorry. And it to hear is that. so so bad and it's just it's just devastating because you know you lose shad mm -hmm. in a way of a total not even accident just the, the ocean the riptide yeah. just you know drowning to then somebody who actually took her yeah. life but yeah. because of cyberbullying bullying. i just think it's important to make note to people out there like what you guys do and what you respond to and and you know your comments they hit home yeah. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're human beings. Yeah, it, well, they look at fans, you know, the ones who are not too not too bright. You know, they look at us as large-in-life characters, and they don't look at us as humans. Right. You know, with social media, um, CM Punk explained it perfect. It's like, you're a public figure, and, you just, and you're, you're, you're in this big, beautiful building, and your window's open, wide open, and anybody could just pass by and just hurl... <laughs> whatever wow. they want and you and you're, and you're getting all these hurls and people are insulting yeah sometimes you just gotta shut the window yeah you just gotta yeah. shut the window i'm just gonna <laughs> say if if uh you know be careful with reality shows if you're mm -hmm. being asked to be part of them you gotta know mm -hmm. <sighs> producers and everything it's not i'm not saying it's their fault i'm just saying mm -hmm. it is a drama show yeah you know a lot of marriages have fallen apart because being in a reality yeah. show yeah. you know just be careful because you're putting yourself in a place where they want negativity. They do. Mm -hmm. They want. Um, but I just want to extend condolences to the family, to mm -hmm. the friends out there, and just let you guys know. I mean, it really is important to just send positivity. Mm -hmm. Do what Chad. Yeah, Chad was. That's what Chad was all about. He just radiated positivity. Positivity. Mm -hmm. If you don't, there really is that slogan. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say, don't say anything at all. Mm -hmm. Period. Shut your mouth. Yeah. It is not worth it. And and it doesn't even make you feel good when yeah. you're putting it. But when you're putting out something positive, it makes you feel amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you because I know it's been a tough week, mm -hmm. and but I want to thank you because I feel like we celebrated him a little bit more. And if you guys want to uh, help out with a GoFundMe then we'll have the link here, but you just literally can go to gofundme.com, put 
uh, Shad Gaspard family, and you'll find the page there. And I just say, keep it going. Keep it going, because they're going to need this so much. Yeah. But as my final question to you, I always love to ask, like you being a kid, looking at your life, <laughs> has your chase for glory looked the way you thought it was going to look? Um, better. <laughs> yeah, better. Um, as a kid, I always wanted to be a professional wrestler, and I got to live that, travel the world, and do what I love to do and get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm going to pers keep pursuing acting. Well, not so much acting. I, like, I want to be behind the scenes. I'm a very creative creative yeah. person. That's why I'm going to work on those, um, that project I was telling you about. Yeah. about the, the, but you like the behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, I, like, I, be, I like being more creative. You know, if an acting gig ever came up, you know, I, I love acting. I'm an entertainer at heart. Yeah. I love entertaining. You're so good at it. Thank you. But Thank you're you. so quiet. That's one thing is you're uh -huh. kind of When the quiet. camera's on, that's when I, I turn up. How? <laughs> so many of the wrestlers are like that. Yeah. I don't know what, I, I, well, what it is, but, you know, I'm, I, uh, me, Jason Paul, you know, I'm down to earth. I'm chill. Um, I enjoy spending time with myself. I, I, like I enjoy my alone peace time. And a lot of people that know me, know me, I don't. And I don't really like the phone. <laughs> like if I want to hang, if I want to talk to you, if I want to converse with you, I'm gonna take an Uber to your house. I'm good. We're gonna hang out. But the phone, I'm not. You know, I want to be yeah. one on one. Yeah. But other than that, I like being with myself. I like my alone time, peace, chill, laid back, and I, and I love to perform. But when it's on, it's on. When it's on, it's on, yeah. yeah. I'm a totally different person. Someone yeah. else takes over. <laughs> yeah. But you've found that behind the scenes, you can also have that fun and that creativity? Yeah. Especially, yeah, with the writing. You know, Shad, you know, definitely opened my my eyes to the to write. When I read him, like, wow, this is great. And I also, I wrote two books. And that was fun. I was able to express um, a comedian, because I've always been into um, to comedy. And I was writing those two books. You know, usually when people write um books about their uh wrestling books about their their career it's kind of like it's kind of like there's a lot of bitterness like what they should have done and mm -hmm. you know this person did me wrong and mine was a lot more upbeat it was comedic like i made fun of myself and shad oh that's cool i gotta <laughs> yeah. read your book yeah. what's the name of it it's called damn why did i write this book <laughs> <laughs> and the second one is called damn why did i write this book too <laughs> yeah like, what, what made you think of that title um, cause I knew I was gonna get heat for it. <laughs> I knew I was gonna get heat for it. So Did like, you get heat? Um, yeah, I think I, I probably. I don't, I don't uh, know, probably, but yeah. <laughs> does it bother you? No, it doesn't bother it's me. It's like no. yeah. it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I told my side of the story from a com from a comedic point of view. I know. love. So, do you want to do stand up at all? Um, I thought about it. I was, there was a time with me and uh, Dolph Ziggler. We were going to a few comedy shows and. You know, and I and it definitely crossed my mind. I was supposed to do a comedy show, and and something happened with the promoter. Um, there was a I did do improv with Chad. Mm. That was fun. That that I definitely opened up the <clears throat> got my feet wet. But I don't know. You know, I, I'm open to to a lot of things. Right I now. love that you're yeah, open. Yeah. I love that you're open. That's <laughs> I'm great. not saying no to, to to a lot of things these days. Yeah, you know? I think it's uh, Wayne Dyer who's like. Don't be attached to anything and be open to everything. Exactly. Something like that. And mm -hmm. it really is true. When you give yourself that opportunity to be open, it's mm -hmm. amazing the opportunity. And the world that can open. Yeah, exactly. And, and not thinking that it's got to look one way. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what we've seen here in Chasing Glory. Everyone's trip has been like, well, I knew I was going to be a wrestler, but man, it's been so much more. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. So it's going to be fun to see what your continued journey thank looks you, like. Thank you. Thank you. But... I love you dearly. Thank I you, mean, thank you, you have someone too. seriously that just from the get go we hit it off, and you're mm -hmm. such a warm hearted person that I want to see success continue to come to you. Thank you. And I just want to thank you for all the years, you know, backstage and traveling mm -hmm. on the road. That was just <laughs> so much fun. This picture now is just so priceless yes. to me and the memories from that. And oh man, we had a good time. But. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you guys for joining us here. Like I said, uh, you know, we we just decided to go ahead and throw this show together, and um, just for the for the cause of Shad and and his memory, and for helping Siliana and Araya, and want to invite you again to definitely head over to GoFundMe and help them out. Look, I've seen the donations of five dollars and ten dollars, and those are beautiful. Give whatever you can because it just means people want to be a part of something and, and want to give. So 
We love you dearly. Go out there, live with much peace, love, and passion. And remember to always be yourself and trust that it's enough. See you guys. This is Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single video or a live stream. And definitely share this with a friend. All right, follow the show at Chasing Glory on Instagram, at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter, and Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. For everything Chasing Glory, just go to ChasingGlory.com. Until next week, go out there and live with much peace, love, and passion. And remember, always be yourself and trust that it's enough. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us here on Chasing Glory from executive producer Lillian Garcia.